Hi, this is all of the information I've been able to learn about the cut, fit, seam placements, and fabrics of Claire's many bodices in Outlander seasons 1 and 2. In this video, I'm primarily focusing on the bodices, and a bit on the skirts and stomachers. None of her accessories or knitwear, and none of her dresses or other irregularities. Someone else may have already done this research, but I wasn't able to find it. Maybe it's buried away on some archive or forum, so I thought I'd put up what I've figured out, as it could be helpful to somebody else. Once you start taking screenshots, you soon fall down the rabbit hole of gloriously mismatched woolens. They seem endless. But according to Terry Dresbach, costume designer for Outlander, for season one she settled on four skirts and five bodices that Claire wears regularly, varied by mix-matching the pairings and adding stomachers, accessories, and knitwear. However, the loophole is the word regularly. There do appear to be somewhat more than five bodices in season one. My count landed at eight. Catriona Balfe was cast only two weeks before shooting began. So the costume team had only two short weeks to create her wardrobe. That is somewhat of a boon to us, because with a shortened timeline, it is extremely likely that the wardrobe department made a single pattern with a perfect fit, then used subtle variations to make all of the bodices from the same base. There are three bodices that see the most screen time. They are virtually identical in cut, with the same neckline shape, skirt in the front, pleated peplum in the back, seam placement, and sleeves. The only thing that separates them is color. Code names are the blue skirted bodice, the brown skirted bodice, and the olive skirted bodice. The olive skirted bodice has a narrow dark trim around the neckline and down the front. The brown skirted bodice starts out plain, but later on it appears to get a makeover. It is given a wide braided trim, though I'm not confident in my interpretation. It appears twice with trim, but because of the lighting it looks like two radically different colors. But the texture of the braid looks the same. And when it first appears it has braid around the sleeves as well but later the sleeve trim is gone. Because we have no logical in-universe reason for removing trim, I'm going to leave it with a question mark. There is the velvet bodice, which has the same back, but does not have the same skirt. Rather, it flares out. The sleeves are similar, but more fitted, and lace onto the bodice with a leather cord. And the center front of the dress meets, and is closed with hooks and eyes. There is a narrow placket behind this to cover the corset between the hooks. At the end of the witch trials, this bodice is ripped down the center back. This gives us a nice chance to glimpse the inside edges. Claire continues to wear this torn bodice until she reaches Lallybrock, and then it is never seen again. R.I.P. Velvet Bodice. Then there is the blue laced bodice, which is nearly identical in cut to the velvet bodice, but it again is parted to show a stomacher. It has the same sleeves and flared out bottom front. The sleeves lace on, sometimes with a leather cord, sometimes with a finer blue cord. This bodice is part of the regular season 1 rotation, until Claire dons it at the end of episode 13, and wears it through the rest of the season. Then it is presumably also retired. And these are, I believe, the five regular bodices Dresbach was talking about. But there are three others. There is the tan tartan bodice, which is the same cut as the blue laced bodice, but instead of sleeves, knitwear is laced onto the arms. This bodice is only worn once, in episode 4. There is the chevron vest, which Claire frequently wears in her medical station. It makes sense as a work bodice because it has a looser, wrapped front with no boning. There is no peplum in the back, and the front does a weird, asymmetrical thing. It is also sleeveless, overall a comparatively comfortable bodice for work. And finally, there is the brown fitted bodice, which is my favorite. It is one of the most iconic looks because it featured in all of the promo shots. Alas, I was very sad to realize that it only appears a few short times in the actual show. This bodice is slightly different, which leads me to wonder if perhaps it was an early prototype bodice that they kept around, even though it wasn't the final look they wanted to go with. The peplum in the back is shorter, and the pleats have been sewn shut to make one smooth flare. The sleeves end just above the elbow, and these are the only sleeves that do not have a short split in the back. The front edge has been tapered down to a smooth line instead of a rounded neckline split down the front. There is a subtle braid trimming the front edges of the bodice. By comparing commonalities between all of the bodices, I think we can come close to recreating the original base pattern. Let's start in the front. There is a seam going down the center of the bust and extending all the way up the front shoulder strap. Every single one of her bodices has this seam with the only exception being the fitted brown bodice, which is a pattern anomaly. It has a single seam more similar to a standard princess seam, supporting my theory that this bodice was an early prototype. This leads me to think that the purpose of the bust seam is probably just to give her a bit of extra room, which you can see in the tan tartan bodice by the way the seam curves away from the stripes, replacing the function of the standard princess seam with something a little more unique and stylized. 
Next is the side seam, which doesn't appear to be perfectly centered at the side. Judging by the placement of this seam in the arm's eye, it appears to be offset slightly towards the back. I'm cool with that though, as it's slightly more historically accurate. Then there are five seams in the back. The center, then two curved seams on each side. The widest seam meets perfectly with the front seam curving over the strap. The middle seam ends just inside the neckline of the strap. At the base, each seam looks like it may be an inch and a quarter or an inch and a half apart. There is no seam joining the peplum to the bodice. It is all one piece. The folds of the peplum lay so smooth and bulk free, I would bet that the entire back is sewn from one piece, which is a very historically accurate method, but I do not know the name of it. Which leaves the mystery seam. That phantom seam which haunted me by flitting in and out of existence. Some bodices clearly had it, some seemed not to. I began to assume all of the bodices had it and it was only poor lighting preventing me from spotting it until this screenshot. The seam is clearly not there. And suddenly I realized the answer. That particular seam is not for the bust. I went back over my screenshots and sure enough, the skirted bodices do not have the seam, the flared bodices all do. The chevron vest doesn't have it either, and it is the only one without any kind of peplum. While the back peplum is one piece with the bodice, the skirted fronts clearly have another seam. This indicates to me that the front of the skirt is made with another flared piece sewn in. But the bodices that flare out without a separate skirt must not have been able to flare enough between the offset side seam and the center bust seam. So another seam was added between these to give the base of the bodice enough flare to make it over Claire's ginormous bum roll. So, if you're going to create a base pattern for yourself, I would recommend you start with the McCall's version. It's not bad. The American Duchess version offered by Simplicity is more historically accurate, but less screen accurate. If you choose to use the McCall's pattern, let me show you how I would adjust the seams once I'd made my mock-up. This does not include any patterning for the pleats, peplum, skirts, or flares. Those would be a whole separate process and would require a lot more than an illustrated rough sketch. Hopefully this will give you an idea of how to make the McCall's pattern a little bit more screen accurate. The sleeves are pretty good, though slightly too long and missing the back split. The front peplum on the pattern looks way too flared, but it might be because the model isn't wearing much of a bum roll. I found that autumn is the only time I can find good fabric for Outlander wools. Other times of the year it simply isn't available. Wool isn't cheap, but luckily bodices don't take much, unlike her skirts. I've had luck searching for wools on Etsy and Mood. Joann's and Fabric.com sometimes have cheaper synthetic alternatives. There is Burnley and Trowbridge for 18th century reproductions, and there are lots of companies, usually UK-based, that sell all manner of high-end tartans and wools. A Canadian mill called GK Textiles Limited holds the copyright of the mist and stone tartan for the skirt, but they do not intend to weave more unless they had a large enough order. The blue skirted bodice appears to be a rich blue from a soft wool, possibly a brushed twill. The brown skirted bodice is lightweight and has less color variation. It is caramely brown, but changes a lot depending on the light. The olive skirted bodice is a tricky one. In some lights it looks more tan, or a green tinged brown. I would guess it's a mixed olive and khaki tweed woven wool. The velvet bodice also looks more green to me. Almost a sage green silk velvet. Though in some cool lights it takes more blue tone, almost becoming a teal. And the blue laced bodice. It has a larger, rougher weave. You can tell the wool is a coarser quality. The color is infuriating. It seems navy in some lights, but the sun washes it out to a gray blue. The tan tartan bodice is a tan tartan. I haven't been able to identify it. The chevron vest is a striped fabric, sewn into a chevron pattern. I don't know what it was, though it looks lighter weight and tightly woven to me. It might be wool, but not necessarily. Linen or cotton are possibilities. And the brown fitted bodice is a heavy looking brown wool with lots of color variation. It looks like a boiled wool to me. Let's talk about closures. Controversial opinion, I don't think the laces go through rings. I think they used large black hooks without the eyes. Look at the way the laces sit. They don't fold on top of each other. They go behind the bodice and come back next to each other. And sometimes you can even see two tiny spots of light at the edge. Hooks would also be very practical from a production point of view faster to lace and way faster to unlace. You wouldn't even need to untie and retie the knots. Also, when she wears the bodice without laces, it would be very simple to put pins in the stomacher across from the hooks and loop the hooks around the pins. The lacing cords vary in color and lacing style. They are seen in cream, brown, and blue. Some of the laces are definitely silk ribbon. Others appear just a tad more substantial. 
Sometimes she does not even lace up the bodice, but pins it directly to her stomacher. Speaking of stomachers, let's count these maddeningly diverse things. There are one or possibly two simple bone stomachers. The ribbing on it looks raised, but I'm not sure whether that is woven into the fabric or accomplished through some kind of tiny cording. There's the fancy beaded stomacher, worn once to dress up an outfit. The tan tartan matching stomacher, only worn with a tan tartan bodice. The olive matching stomacher, worn with the olive bodice and once with the brown bodice. The white work embroidery stomacher, worn pretty frequently. A blue stomacher to match the blue skirted bodice and one to match the blue laced bodice. These may or may not be the same stomacher depending on how well the blues match. There is the blue floral embroidered stomacher, the tambour embroidered stomacher, and the gold brocade stomacher, which only got one short bit of dimly lit screen time and everlasting life through promo shots. In season two, we introduced the smocked white stomacher, the smocked blue stomacher, oh, and I almost forgot the embroidered leaf stomacher. That is a borderline excessive number of stomachers, but they do seem to be an almost universal pattern, so there's something. There are supposedly four skirts worn in season one. There's the iconic mist and stone tartan skirt, there is a brown skirt, and there is an olive skirt made from the same fabric as the olive bodice. This brings us to three. Now this is only speculation because it's impossible for me to know for sure, but I think there is a second brown skirt. There are so many shades of brown in her wardrobe, some of them are impossible to distinguish in different lighting, but the brown skirt sometimes appears to be a warmer, more reddish brown, and sometimes it appears to be a darker, more tree bark brown. If these are, in fact, the same jacket, the skirts would have to be different to have that level of contrast. So I'm not 100% positive, but my best bet is that there are two slightly different brown skirts. And let's briefly talk Claire's return to Scotland in the last few episodes of season two. Her camp wardrobe has been mercifully slimmed down. She has a blue skirted jacket. It looks identical to her season one version, but I don't think it is. The fabric color looks different in the light, more of a muted gray blue with a looser woven texture. I could be wrong, but look at the shoulder seams. See how well it matches up in season two? See how it was in season one? Methinks different jacket. She also gets to keep her olive skirted bodice and the matching skirt, which is the combination she wears home to the 40s, to later be burnt on the funeral pyre of my sympathy towards Frank. However, I'm not confident about this identification. It might be another recreation, meant to look like her original set. It does appear to be more olive toned than her season one set, and it does make sense for the costume department to want to give season two a clean slate, though one that still maintains her original style. However, they do reuse her stays and at least one stomacher, so I don't know, I'm on the fence. Her reduced wardrobe is supplemented by a new tartan skirt, and her chevron medical vest has been replaced by an identical vest in a cream fabric with a textured checked pattern. It even has the same piping and shell button closure. And that's it for season two. She keeps up the variation with the stomachers and the knits, but overall, for a camp follower, I was very happy with this as a reasonable amount of clothing to haul around battlefields. So there you have it. I'm mostly working on patterning right now, and that's what I was paying attention to. Less on the fabrics and knits and such. I'll post more if I happen to become obsessively focused on another element of her wardrobe, but please comment if you have any questions or any pics or information that I may be unaware of. All of this is pure speculation based off screenshots, and I will take any additional information I can get. I plan on backing up all of my screenshots to a Pinterest board, which I'll link below. Also, let me know if you'd like to see further progress, working on pattern adjustments, mock-ups, or a final piece.